Hi, thanks for stopping by and f spending a few minutes with me here today. Um, this slide in particular uh, is really adjacent to everything we've done here with our technology. Um, I've built out four different kind of uh, squares here, if you will, to kind of review this. So we've built out a messaging layer and an API layer here at the bottom. We had to build this out first for the calendar server for AWS. And then as we were exploring and building out our APIs and messaging layer and getting feedback from customers, we took uh, this thing we called countersnack.com and actually built out a bona fide app. Now this app comes free with the calendar server itself. So essentially what we're selling is a serverless application model template or SAM template. If you were interested in this technology to bolt into your AWS account, just uh, get to 31events.com. And when you go to 31events.com, you'll see that uh, at the uh, site, there is actually a form to fill out. God forbid another form, but we do have a form for you to fill out. When you fill it out, we'll get in touch with you and you'll be able to actually dive into the evaluation agreement. You fill it out, it's free, and then we ship you the template and you're off and running. But particular, um, what comes with the calendar uh, stack here uh, called Simple Invite Service uh, is our messaging APIs and the calendar snack app. So you have a front end, you have a back end ready to rock and roll. That's all in the deployable number three into the downloadable template. Again, you fill out the form, uh, I get you the template and you're off and going. So uh, let's kind of drop into a couple detailed workflows. So how uh, the simple invite service works with a landing page um, I've discussed heavily on YouTube. We have about 350 videos out there. There's probably at least 100 of them that kind of go over this uh, tech stack. So um, at a high level, I built this slide uh, taking you through one, two, three, uh, four, and five. So th simply um, you bolt this into your S uh, ES account, your simple email service account, um, our stack, um, gives you all the deployable instructions via command line if you want to use that. And you set up your SES account, S3 buckets, a Dynamo DB instance, API gateway, um, and a few other goodies, including some email templates we give you. And that's all in a box and it's all set up and you're all ready to go. Essentially, it emulates the install footprint that you would need to run the calendar snack application. And then it gives you a good idea of what the DevOps pipeline looks like for a tech stack like this. On top of that stack is what brings it all alive is the calendar snack app. And the calendar snack app comes in a template itself. It's a view.js app. Um, it's got several components, but it's all bound together a nice uh, file when you download the calendar server itself in the SAM template. The view.js file is in that bundle, and then we walk you through how to get this all wired up with your account. So what happens is once you're wired up, your organized, I, excuse me, your organizers take on a persona um, and the uh, calendar client becomes the crud. So when they drop off a crate at yourdomain.com to an email box in which you set up with her tech stack, all it is is simply an SES account that you identify for a crate uh, drop off box, if you will. Anybody within your domain that drops off a calendar invitation, we auto dissect that or disassemble that calendar invite and get it ready to be sent with AWS SES. And so this bring alive technology stack is really talking about in number two, the calendar invites are ready to go automatically within the account within a matter of a few minutes. And our tech stack uh, disassembles and reassembles the calendar invites on the fly. And so in the upcoming landing page itself, we have the ability to auto stream everything coming up for that organizer's account and auto ingest that into a landing page that has the preset um, name at the top. And when people click the landing page, uh, get the calendar invite, we're actually tracking the calendar invites here, number three. And number four, we have a really nice, elaborate, detailed dashboard for the organizers. And then the 
dashboard for the organizer allow uh, people to actually uh, get detailed invite e uh, reports sent to them as the organizer itself. So this is the workflow for the large list. The large list follows the same modality or the same interface journey, if you will. Uh, data is sent to a box of uh, calendar invites, if you will. So in this organizer schedule here, what this organizer did for the NFL schedule was sent the 300 events to crate at football schedule or crate at countersnack.com, excuse me, for the football schedules. And those schedules auto magically showed up in S3 and SES. And then we just assembled those calendar invites and got them staged to be sent in a visualizer API call essentially uh, in the view.app here. And we're able to. Uh, essentially pick out which games we wanted to send um, a calendar invite to using a large bulk list. And so when the list is sent, we track the calendar invites in three, and then in four, we gather the data, and then five, we can get granulated data back to the organizer. Now at a superset level, at a domain level, we do track all organizers within a domain for the calendar server. So in an API first strategy with AWS, we have the calendar server APIs, the message flow with the organizer, um, and then we have domain apps uh, as well. So to clarify, as an organizer, you actually send your invites in to the box. We disassemble, reassemble those on the fly uh, under the master SES account, and then the calendar snack app can be used for all domain. And the all domain is we gather all organizers data from all calendar invites used at a domain space level. It's really cool. So the recap here is we have a calendar snack for the organizer, we have a calendar snack for the domain, and then you get a calendar API kit with the um, nine APIs. And then this bundling of the message kit itself is actually embedded into the workflow itself. We do provide you a good uh, flow diagram of how it all works together. Essentially, it's a calendar server built specifically for serverless for AWS. Um, so I walk through a detail here of uploading the list here in our calendar snack app to send out bulk uh, calendar invites using an email list, and then specifically what happens at a granulated level. And then over here, we're walking through basically a specific game in which I was sending a, a calendar invite for the San Diego Padres at the Colorado Rockies game. Um, that is again, for example, only. So as I step through the granulated details here, customer logs into the Calendar Snack app. The APIs are supplied by the Calendar Snack service. It builds out a view app in the browser, and then we start hitting the CDN with the customer session. Once the customer signs up for the Calendar Snack service, the customer can proceed to the dashboard. No credit card is required for the demo app. The no code VIP list in this example is selected here on the left, like I discussed and it's configured to send calendar invites in less than 10 seconds. The VIP list then can be used for marketing event campaigns. And then we're promoting the fact that um, this industrial strength calendar invite sending API itself in which we built uh, can uh, be hooked up to your pinpoint channel. And if you have channel email lists in which you've been sending email uh, to for typical transactional or other um, needs for email marketing, we are suggesting you could use this interface here blended uh, for testing, and then use the direct call API to actually send out for a specific calendar invite to a large list. Um, now our technology allows you to edit and then basically update and delete the calendar invites using the organizers calendar client itself. Now, all this data is stored for the individual UIDs in DynamoDB, and they're under recall any given time using the dashboards themselves. So I'm going to kind of go through um, our intellectual property and actually how it works. 
uh, when you fill out the form, we'll get you um, a downloadable SAM template. We'll help co-install that in your account. We'll get you up and running under SES. Uh, this process takes about 45 minutes, typically, uh, to get everything uh, wound up, wire and nuts, if you will, um, in your account. Now, if you're an AWS architect engineer, you're probably going to be fine without us. We'll just ship you the template and our install docs do a really nice job of um, using the command line interface in the SAM template to explode out what services are needed to install and get you up and running. Now, for the YAML template over here, um, the YAML template defines the resources and their configuration. So for SNS, we have a topic policy subscription. For the SQS, we have a QM policy for both primary and dead letter queues. For Lambda, we call a service stack, which we reference in the SAM app. That was published through the CI/CD pipeline and passing environment variables, email template, the repel uh, file location, or locally uh, passed. The outgoing SES queue to send notifications, which trigger the other Lambdas, SES notification, etc. That function or functions in plural will be used to process the data sent to the Lambda, which is triggered by a new item in a corresponding SQS, i.e. when someone drops off the new calendar invites as an organizer, this spawns the, um, the deconstruction and reconstruction of the calendar invite information inside the calendar uh, server machine in which we've built. <clears throat> now, the stack template is generated in our CICD um, repo. So as you subscribe to our repo itself, any updates are auto magically sent to you to your SAM template and you're off and running. You shouldn't have to worry about it. So how uh, CRUD is working is essentially, as I spoke about, at a high level design, we're getting more into low level design here. Um, this is coming from October 4th, 2024 demo series I did. So essentially, when someone uses a create at your domain command, in this case here, our show home app is create at countersnack.com, it hits our first Lambda. And that basically the first Lambda hits a box and it does a disassembly of new calendar invite from the SES box using SNS and SQS. There's a Lambda, Lambda Python event to ETL and store the components in DynamoDB with the correct UID and the organizer's name for reassembly when needed to send a calendar invite on SES. So in the first kind of scoring or piece of music that is the important part of ingest is these individual calendar invites were taking off a calendar um, and that calendar was football schedules at outlook.com in which I signed up for our service for under calendar snack that auto ingested me into the provisioning engine and I was able to basically dump these off. And then uh, this is my master calendar schedule under Outlook. And here I'm showing you the details of these. This data was loaded into the um, singleton calendar invites here on Outlook. I copied them using crate uh, at calendar snack com and then we disassembled the calendar data and stored it into S3 and DynamoDB, getting ready to essentially launch when needed using our API calls. Now, the API calls are essentially doing numerous things, uh, and there's nine of them. So when I talk about kind of how it's set up here, there's an SES email box mechanically set up to route. And then the first one I talked about was disassemble new invite data from the SES inbox using SNS, SNS, SQS, and Lambda, which is a proprietary um, piece of Python code uh, to ETL and store the components of the calendar invite in DynamoDB with a UID, uh, and then the organizer for retrieval when needed. So I've kind of gone over that. It's Another scoring of music where we kind of go over it and over and over it so we understand that this is a Lambda exercise. Now, dimensionally, there's there's uh, many Lambdas that lay down um, all kinds of componentry here in the calendar server I'm not going to go into. I'm just highlighting at a high level that the calendar client itself is really fast and efficient, really provides a ready-made interface in the AWS create, read, update, and delete for CRUD, and it's kind of core to the calendar server which we built. 
Now, once that data is inside your AWS account, it really prepares it for the sending account invites on the AWS SES platform. Um, while tracking RSVPs for large scale email campaigns using AWS Pinpoint or embedding the calendar invites in the landing page market. So this is a very wide multi-billion dollar market. Um, the embedding portion of it in landing pages, um, also AWS Pinpoint and large scale campaigns for segment marketing is very large. So as I drill into the mailbox is configurable at create at your own address.com. It could be anything you want. In this example here, we use create at calendarsnack.com and built a whole application about that. And that's the basis of the uh, how ingest works for the calendar server stack. So SES created mailbox. The mailbox is set up for your SES domain to capture and route of the calendar invite information to process the data. It's not only used for create, but it's used for update and delete of the calendar invite information inside AWS. So the critical part of it is the calendar client becomes the CRUD. And if you look at it between Outlook and uh, Google, both those clients are really the Ferraris of front ends, if you will, for anyone wanting to manipulate calendar invite data. So that's why we're using them. So using the calendar client, again, at a detailed create, read, update, and delete data in the SES mailbox to display in an app. That app backend or the calendar service called the Simple Invite Service or SIS. And I elaborate here dimensionally. I showed you the four invites and which were highlighted for the demo. The box itself is hooked up here to SES, the inbox. Uh, this arrow is coming across this dimension of processing. Um, this abbreviated arrow in the middle as I'm rolling across, we're using SES, SNS, SQS, S3, Lambda, DynamoDB, and the API gateway. The first Lambda hit, I talked about the disassembly um, and then laying down of the calendar invite assets off the calendar itself, um, it, the calendar client itself, excuse me, again, Outlook or Google Calendar. Those assets are laid down into the databases uh, that are appropriate in the storage layer of AWS. And then when we get to pull and retrieve, we have a single, invite, a single event detail. So this one here, API number one, is the calendar invite API that retrieves the event details. The event details here in the Calendar Snack app are associated with a very good and granulated detail viewing report. So we're pulling that data here for event details. So that's coming right off the calendar client itself. This data here is sitting in a, a, a DynamoDB. And then for retrieval, it sits behind the API gateway and we're hitting this single event detail. So that's what lays out all this great detail. Now, API number two is doing a single event status and reporting, a high level detail. And we're actually counting the number of calendar invites coming back and forth as calendar receipts. So in this slide here, it's more elaboration of specifics. So back to the email box, uh, SES routes in stores working in conjunction with um, S3. So SES and S3, you have the SQS and SNS routing and messaging and queuing to make sure the Lambda picks up the data set and then shuffles it around to the Lambda and then it's laid down into DynamoDB and inserts. So particularly here, we're taking a scalpel to subject date, time, location, uh, reminder time, message body, organizer, and UID, and then receipt request. That's all laid down in the Dynamo database. Now specifically, there's another uh, part of the calendar snack app I'm showing you that visualizes all this great data and all this great layered technology between the messaging and APIs. And it's right here um, in the generator. So under send uh, invites, we have a generator for upcoming. That takes all the stage data out of DynamoDB. It lays it in a time series uh, API. That array is stuck into the calendar snack app itself, and it's visualized here at great detail. It auto basically generates these uh, invite landing pages with the ability to insert uh, somebody's email at the top, and then independently you can take a scalpel to which ones you want. So this here, um, 
lays down the fact that this get uh, the invite is actually a very elaborate um, API that sits behind the API gateway, and it's using a Lambda um, to actually insert the API raw call from SES and build a multi-part calendar invite on the fly. So the technology behind that's another layer deep. I'm not going to get into that, um, but it's a very advanced piece of technology uh, that's part of our intellectual property. So external auto-generated web page I just showed you, put in the insert email. This is basically how the Willy Wonka machine works here. Um, the email itself is gathered. It's inserted uh, from this array here, uh, the landing page, and then it's inserted into the call of the single uh, event invitation send API. And this API sends out the email from clicking that button there. And it retrieves and builds a calendar invite on the fly for that UID. And then the calendar invites are sent out to the particular people that use this web page. And that's elaborated here. Calendar invites sent by SES account using the raw API for the calendar invite and um, we're collecting the calendar receipts back from your customers and that is here in single event stats and reporting api itself that description is event stats sent by api retrieves the calendar invites for the totals of invitations sent and rsvps re received you see that this here is an aws account and as i elaborated the calendar invite is reassembled for dynamo db using the lambdas to insert the data into raw uh, SES API multi-part. This builds a calendar invite based on the UID. So I think I hammered that home enough. It's an important part of our, our stack overall. So um, we use the same route and layers of messaging and APIs for the ability to send to a bulk list. If you think about it, it's doing the same thing, but it is queuing differently. So when you batch up, say, 1,000, 100,000, or a million, there's a batching that goes on in the back that basically uh, scalpels in 50 to 100 per second of the data from the email list and then bundles it up, making sure we're using SNS and SQS to lay down a rhythm that allows us to use AWS Pinpoint to deliver and batch out uh, calendar invites for particular events. So what this stack allows you to do though, as a visualizer, really the, the bulk calendar invite sending from a list, um, we've sent up to 10,000 testing off of this piece of technology we've built. And it really works good um, for testing A-B testing. So um, we have had several large brands use it and then the large brands now are moving to AWS Pinpoint to obviously automate the service level of all their multi-channels. But it has been um, really cool to work with this concept of being able to pick out a, a game for the NFL, batch up a test send, and then visualize it for you, the consumer, to understand how this all works. So I'm going to move on to the next one. But as I role play through this, when we click here, uh, and we send a batch here, say, of 11 as a test. We go out and fan out the 11. It's gone through the same uh, construction, deconstruction. So we pick up the deconstructed uh, calendar invite UID and we reconstruct on the fly a calendar invite using the AWS uh, multi-part API, send it out, and then we collect the calendar receipts there. Same way with the button. Uh, if you are to use a... RSVP button from our tech stack. You can get to it here under send invites. You click and we build your button on the fly. That API is doing the same routing. It's going to call our API for a single event send for that UID. We're going to build you a calendar write specifically for that event. And then we're going to send it out when someone clicks a button inside a MailChimp or Klaviyo. Then we gather the calendar receipts back in reporting engine. And you'll see the uh, details on the reporting engine here. We collect um, a lot of good granulated data uh, from the single events. 
And that data um, here in high fidelity, when someone clicks this button here, we're going to uh, across the processing layer of the calendar server stack we've built called Simple Invite Service, go get that data, and then we're gonna send the event organizer a, a very detailed attachment. And in that attachment, you see that um, in this call request across the messaging stack, we hit the single invite detail API, the single event status API, and then we request one more thing, which is a single event invitee list when you hit this button. And that invitee list is a very granulated detailed list of who has clicked what buttons and who has accepted or denied or no action to the calendar receipts when they go out. Uh, this is a very dynamic piece of technology and it's really cool to watch in large events where people sign up um, and then they uh, wait to the last minute. You can see the calendar invites coming in sometimes one hour prior to the event, even though you sent it out uh, two weeks prior. So that's kind of a wrap up. I appreciate you stopping by and checking us out. Thanks.